say it because it's the truth. I don't say it like, why can't those guys figure it out? No, right. Yeah. I say it because I know it's the truth, and in releasing it into the earth, I know God right. is releasing it into the earth to, to do something. But it, it, it it's it apart from Christ, you can't resist that temptation. And see, the serpent was very uh, cunning. He knew this. Within every human being is this wiring to believe I'm full of glory and honor. Within the heart of every human being. So, what do you think the heart of every human being will feel in the face of that glory and honor not being recognized? And not, not, not only not being recognized in some cases, but if they're actually being treated as if they're subservient, the, the tremendous temptation that comes against a, uh, the heart of a person in situations like that, man, I do not pretend that that is not a heavy, heavy thing that comes at their heart. Right. But there's salvation in Jesus. Because every one of us is wired to believe. Like we're talking about uh, the, the, the injustice thing right now with the police. Yeah. You know? Um, every single one of those people that whether they're being treated unjust or not that's besides the point for the sake of the argument let's just say they are they're being treated unjustly there's something in their heart that says I'm the son of the king mm -hmm. there's something in their heart telling them that they're full of glory and honor that they're full of value and worth and then in their mind they're looking over at someone else who is not acknowledging it. Right. And not only not acknowledging it, but actually treating them as if they don't have it. As if they don't have value and worth. As if they're not full of glory and honor. As if their life isn't valuable. As if they're less than. Mm -hmm. They deserve less. Man, what do you think that's going to do in their heart? Knowing that their heart's predisposed to believe that they are full of glory and honor. Mm -hmm. If they don't know that they've already attained the glory and honor in Jesus, and he's already conquered their injustice, and that their life is hidden in Christ, they're going to then begin to fight to prove it. In fact, it's impossible for them not to. And the serpent knew that. He knew. He knew. Oh, they, you know, and Gary uh, brought up a speculative thing. See, he, he asked me, well, Greg, what do you think would have happened if Adam had it just, you know, after he ate from the tree and saw death manifesting and saw that he wasn't clothed in glory anymore, if Adam would have just said, um, I'm not going to lift one finger to clothe myself. He said, what do you think would have happened? I said, well, I think it's obvious what would have happened. What would have happened is, is that Adam would have been saved from sin and death right there, and the whole world would have been saved from sin and death right there. The problem is, it, it's impossible for Adam to have done that because only the Spirit of God in a person can do that. You can't do it through your own ability. And so when I see guys fighting for, for rights and fighting justice, I don't despise them because that's the foundation they're in. I realize that that's actually the only thing they can do apart from the Spirit of Christ. And so my answer isn't come to tell them to stop fighting. Right. My answer isn't to tell them they shouldn't fight for their rights. If I'm going to say that, I'm going to then come with why they shouldn't. My answer is to come and to preach Christ as the only word about their life and the only thing that can establish their glory and honor. They can't establish their glory and honor by fighting. They can't prove they're valuable by fighting. It doesn't matter how many people they kill or how many wars they fight or win. They still can't establish their glory and honor. They still can't establish their value and worth. Mm -hmm. It's empty. Yeah. Vanity yeah. of vanities. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's how you fight injustice, really, is you preach Christ and Him crucified and Christ and Him crucified alone. Right. And you start telling people that they, the glory they're fighting for is a glory that's of the world and it ain't glorious at all. It's right, and you start preaching where the glory really is, and now their heart can be captivated by it because their heart is just grab it. Every human being knows they're full of value and worth deep down. Mm. Deep down, they all know. And when Satan got the whole system in the world rigged, boy, because he knows the world's going to come at everybody and tell them, you ain't got, you got no it. value and worth. <laughs> That's right. And he knows there is the foundation for them now fighting oh, for it. Sure. And that's why we say, I'm crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the, this life that I live in the flesh, I no longer live trying to fight to prove I have glory and honor or to prove that I have value and worth. But this life that I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith that came in the person of Jesus that established my glory and honor at the right hand of God that can never be unseated. I don't function as if it, it's still up in the air. Right. 
It isn't up in the air anymore. It doesn't matter what some clown may do to me. It's not up in the air. It doesn't matter what the government can do to me. It doesn't matter what the police can do to me. It's not up in the air anymore. My life isn't hanging in the balance anymore. My life is not in their hands. My life is in the hands of God. And he has taken my life and removed the substance of my life from this earth. That means nothing in this earth can corrupt my life. Right. So how am I now going to function as if it can? Mm -hmm. Blessed are the peacemakers. And you don't make peace by coming and telling people, peace, whoa, Kimosabi. Yeah. <laughs> you preach peace. Peace means to be set at one again or to be joined again to God. And what does that mean? It's talking about being joined again to an incorruptible, immortal life. Guess what that does inside of our human being? Peace. Guess what that does whenever the soul of a person is subverted by the injustice that comes against them in this world? It brings peace. Right. It squashes it. Salvation. Something comes alive inside of them where they say, oh, I'm not trying to prove who I am. Right. See, that's what injustice wants to do. Yeah. Like if we just yeah. use the pol this police thing. It's trying to get these guys to think they have to prove they're valuable. Sure. They have to prove they have worth. They have to prove they're a son. Right. The serpent's right there. Yeah. Okay. If you are the son. Right. Why would this be happening to you? Mm -hmm. right. mm. Prove you're the son. Get these guys to acknowledge. If you can get them to acknowledge, then you'll have life. Yeah, but you won't. No. Oh, yeah. It's a temptation common to man. Yes. Yeah. That's how he does it. Jesus, what was what did Jesus see in his flesh when he went out to be tempted by the devil? He hadn't eaten in forty days, no food or water. He saw death. He felt his his flesh was dying. Sure. If you are the son of God, right. you make your ability your food for life. Yeah. Enlist your ability and make that bread and eat it. That's what the whole world is tempting all of us in the face of every injustice or inequality. If you are the son, use your ability and make that right. Mm. <laughs> it's like it's like the devil coming and tempting us. This is the most radical way you can think of it. Use your ability to save yourself from sin and death. Right. Any injustice that can come against any of us in this world is sin and death. And so now, will we believe we can save ourselves from sin and death by our ability? Oh, that's good. Even if we could straighten that thing out. Yeah. Do we think it being straightened out can save us from sin and death? Yeah. If I can get the government to treat me the way that it should, will that now clothe me with glory and immortality? Then guess what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> You see, that's the wisdom of the serpent in the world, tempting us all to reason from his stimuli right. so that we fill in the blanks right. with his thinking, and then it sends us off, laboring and toiling for life, laboring and toiling for justice. Man, God already established justice. He did. And now I wait patiently. 